I've sat in a lot of chairs. I've been a high school principal in Arizona, high school principal in Nevada. I've also been a region superintendent, now in my fourth year as a superintendent in San Francisco. I spent 30 years as a management consultant at McKinsey & Company, most of that time in San Francisco. I spent the last five years as part of our Washington, D.C. practice, helping build our public sector practice and bridging the public sector, the private sector, and philanthropy in the social sector. I've been able to work in the nonprofit sector. I've been able to work uh, with government quite a bit uh, in my nonprofit career. And then now I'm working in private sector, specifically in tech. My parents uh, were both born in the United States, but we have very, very deep roots to northern Mexico. Uh, my mother graduated from high school. My father grew up in the midst of the uh, Korean War, uh, so he had to leave school uh, in the seventh grade to go out and work. I was born in Turlock, California. My father worked 100 hours a week on the dairy farm, and my mother was actively engaged in both raising the family and supporting the farm. My parents and my grandparents were very interested in ensuring that their kids had an opportunity to go on to uh, education after high school. I grew up in the barrio in, in, in Boyle Heights, East LA. I grew up in the projects. I'm the 11th of 13 children. My mother had a uh, sixth grade education and my father had a fourth grade education. I do remember being in elementary school and my father going to night school. He got his GED. He wanted to be sure that my brother and I knew that regardless of him leaving school, that that GED, that high school diploma was really important. And they inculcated in my brother and I from a very young age this idea that we're gonna go to college. My father had a, a, a radio system in the uh, dairy barn, so we'd be having talk shows on or radio programs. And one of the important ones that we spent a lot of time listening to was the Commonwealth Club in California, where they'd always have great speakers coming in and talking about big social or political issues. And it really helped spark my interest in trying to engage in those kinds of things. So the coast is a small but very diverse community in every dimension. The public schools are the center of the community here. And being able to be engaged with the schools to ensure that everyone has an opportunity here has been one of the great pleasures of our families' lives. In many ways, the bar was set kind of low for most, for most kids. Um, it wasn't the expectation that you were gonna go to college wasn't there. Had it not been for you know, some support I got from some of my teachers early on, um, then I don't know that I would be here today. It wasn't really until high school when my counselors started talking about college. My teachers were talking to us about college and what, what was before for me an abstraction all of a sudden became a possible reality. My parents really knew nothing about how to pay for college. I remember looking at a statement and then looking at on an annual basis how much he made and I was just floored by the fact that he, my father never made more than $16,000 a year. Starting from the age of about six to seven years old, I, I've played mariachi music. And when I graduated from high school, started playing with lots of different groups around town. Uh, and we would play weddings and wedding masses and, and you know parties. And it was earning some pretty decent money doing that. Music was what helped me not only stay connected to who I am, but it also kind of helped pay for school as well. My family had a little bit saved that certainly was helpful, but got substantial scholarships from both the college itself. I maxed out on student loans that I could do, and when I was in college, I worked 10 to 20 hours a week to get through. To a young person today who thinks that they can't afford college, I would say you actually can't afford not to think about college. I went straight from college to working for McKinsey in New York. They interviewed on campus. I would not have had that opportunity had I not gone to college. When I got into college, I knew what got me there but I didn't know what I needed to get me out of there. You know, I started college at UC Santa Cruz, and a year later I was out. I thought that I could do the same things that I was doing in high school, and then just wasn't enough. And so I decided to go back to school, and I went back to community college. And that's where I learned how to be a college student. You know, because of my experience there, I was able to transfer to Pomona College, uh, to a school that I would have never been able to get into coming out of high school. There is this notion that a young man of color sees me as a superintendent and sees that I've earned a degree, has earned several degrees, that they then say, well, if he can do it, I can do it. College for me really expanded my horizons from the 
drive around a dairy farm to the world as a possibility. For me, being a first generation college graduate is a long story. It's, it's about the process that you go through to get there. It's about the adversity you have to overcome. Um, but just as importantly, it's about the realm of opportunities. When I got my college diploma, I was numb. I remember thinking, seven years.